Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the bidirectional forwarding detection feature known as BFD. My name's Lee Wooderson. I'm actually a CCIE in routing and switching. If you've got any questions, please feel free to either email me or use the comment section below and I'll always try and answer your questions. So what actually is BFD? Now BFD is a UDP lightweight keep alive used for fast path failure detection and it can actually do this as low as 150 milliseconds now if you compare that to the closest alternative which would be adjusting the hello and hold timers of something like OSPF, ERGR, PIS, IS and the, the, the lowest you can actually get those failure detection times is around one second which is obviously nowhere near as low as BFD now another key advantage to running BFD is the very low overhead. When you use fast hellos and hold timers that's actually all done in the control plane and this increases the load on the CPU because those packets are all process switched. Now the actual reason for the low overhead is because BFD can be done in hardware on most platforms and offloaded at the line card level. Now the way it does this is by sourcing the UDP BFD echo packet from itself, destined to itself. So when it reaches the neighbour, it sees the destination is right back out the same interface and this creates a continuous keep alive loop between the neighbours. Now another key benefit to BFD is that it runs on its own as a completely separate process. You then register the upper layer protocols with it. You could literally be running BGP, OSPF, ERGRP and ISIS all on the same router, yet they would only ever need to reference the one BFD process to determine the link status. Now, as you can imagine, this is definitely a more consistent and efficient approach as opposed to having to modify timers across multiple different protocols, which creates more administrative overhead and increases the load on the control plane. Now in my experience the most common use case for BFD is when you have multiple paths to your provider for something like the internet or MPLS L3 VPN which will provide you that sub-second failure detection to reroute around the problem. It's worth noting that if you don't have multiple paths then there really is no benefit to running BFD because you can't reroute around the failure anyway. Now the other key thing I wanted to go over is that if you know the neighbour is directly connected like in the first apology and you also know that the link status is reliable i.e. there's nothing in the middle such as a layer 2 switch or a repeater then there's actually no point running BFD because you can already rely on the layer 1 keeper lives. Now if you take a look at the second topology where we have something like a metro switch in the middle at layer 2 if any of those links go down, then the link status is unreliable because the layer 1 keep alive is not end to end. If the PE side went down, the CE side would remain up. And this is the perfect candidate for BFD. So after this slide, I actually will be going over a brief demonstration. But the configuration of BFD is actually very straightforward. Firstly, you configure the BFD transmit interval and receive intervals. The receive interval is the minimum time capable of being supported from the BFD neighbour. The multiplier setting, which dictates the dead timer. So in this example, 3 times 50 millisecond would be a dead timer of 150 millisecond, declaring the neighbour down. Secondly, we need to go to the respective process or protocol and register BFD with it. If we don't do that, then the, the process will never start. And this is actually slightly different depending on the protocol in use. So I do recommend referencing the documentation for the different variations. For the most part, with IGP such as OSPF, ERGRP, ISIS, the quickest way is just to go to the routing protocol process and say BFD all interfaces. Thirdly, on most platforms, this is done by default, but I recommend doing it anyway, and that's to turn off ICMP redirects, and this is to avoid that high, high CPU utilization that you're going to get with the echo process. And then lastly, you can verify the process is registered, the parameters, the timers, using the show BFD neighbors detail command. Okay, so before we go over the demonstration, I want to quickly 
show you where to reference this in the documentation. So from the main site, go to support and downloads, networking software, 15.4, configuration guides, and then it's actually in its own section on IP routing and just choose the one at the top. Let's reference the configuration examples. The one that we're actually going to be doing today is OSPF. So as you can see, you turn on the interval and timers and the multiplier for the dead timer. And then you just turn it on at the OSPF process level. Very, very simple. Verification commands show BFD neighbors detail. We're going to go over this in the demonstration, but as you can see, shows the negotiated timers. Now BF, uh, BGP is slightly different. If you look at BGP, you can see that the main difference is the fallover command. So everything is the same as before at the interface level, but you simply just say neighbor and then fallover BFD. If we look at the static routes, the main difference is you have this globally. So you say IP root static, BFD, the interface that you want to run BFD on, and then the neighbor. And one more that we'll go over is HSRP. With HSRP, you don't actually do have to do anything. You just turn on the timers, run the standby process, the HSRP process, and as you can see, it says that the standby BFD and the standby BFD all interfaces commands are not displayed and this is due to them being enabled by default. So uh, with that being said, we'll, uh, we'll go into the demonstration. Okay guys, very straightforward topology. We have router one connecting directly to switch one and switch one connecting directly to router two. Router 1 and Router 2 are not directly connected, however they are layer 2 adjacent. OSPF has already been set up and all of the interfaces have already been set up. So you've got IP addressing on Router 1 and Router 2 and on Switch 1 both of those interfaces are in VLAN 2. So let's show the, show the interface on Router 1. As we can see, 10.0.0.5 and on the other side, we have 10.0.0.6. We can already demonstrate that the neighbor is up. It's using the loopback as the neighbor ID, is the router ID. And we also know that it's gonna be up on the other side as well. And if we do a show interface status on the switch, you can see that both of these interfaces are in VLAN 2 and you can see the respective interface that it goes to. So what we're gonna do is just shut down gig zero two on the switch, and then we can look at router one to see that it should take 40 seconds, because if we show IP OSPF interfaces, we can see by default that the dead time is 40 seconds. I know we can tune this so it can be a one second, but by default, OSPF on a broadcast network type is 40 seconds. So let's do it. Shut down gig zero two. And we can look at router one and see that the dead timer is gonna go down until it eventually dies. And then we'll get a console message declaring the neighbor down, which we did. Now, obviously in a real deployment, that's too long. If we have multiple paths and we need to reconverge, 40 seconds is not gonna cut it. And that was slightly less than 40 seconds because obviously it depends where you are in the hello interval. But at the end of the day, it's too slow. 
So now what we'll do is we'll bring it back up and we'll demonstrate, we'll bring it back up, we'll configure BFD and we'll demonstrate that it instantly declares the neighbor down. What we'll do as well is we'll reference the documentation in order to speed things up. So we'll get the BFT interval command that we use at the interface level. And we'll configure that on gig zero two on each side. see it's now on the interface on router 2 quickly verify that on router 1 and it's there as well now remember what I said before we are, we've configured it on both of the interfaces the interfaces are up but if we do show BFD neighbors it's not running because we need to register register BFD with the upper layer protocol before it initializes. So to do that with OSPF, as you can see in the documentation, BFD, you just turn, you, you get root OSPF, you turn on, so enter the process and then turn on BFD all interfaces. So root OSPF one, BFD all interfaces. We'll do the same thing on router two. You can see that the the BFD process started at the console message. And if we do a show BFD neighbors, you can see now that the neighbor is up. And if we do a neighbor detail, Again, you can see it's up. We're using the echo function, which is on by default. The echo function simply means that it does that loop, that constant UDP packet that it loops around. So it's in hardware. The timers are there. And you can also see the registered protocols there. So OSPF is what we're using. Okay, and there's your echo interval, the 50 milliseconds that we configured. So with that in mind, let's shut it down again and see how fast it takes to show that console message of declaring the neighbor down. As you can see, instantly declared it down. Even though we're not directly connected, it instantly declared it down. And that is exactly what you would want in a real world deployment. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next one.